Wow, got everyone. Today I have a new build for Diablo 4 for the Spirit Bomb. Now looking behind me, I want to show you guys the mobility and also the ability of this build. We're going to be leaping around, vortexing everyone together, staggering them, and also have great mobility for this build. As you can see, we're currently testing this particular build on tier 70, which is a world 4 plus difficulty. And one of the biggest points about this build is not only it's super survivable, it also has some of the most amazing mobilities or travel spells. You can be leaping with your hunt ability and also with your sword ability, which auto casts vortex around you and this also turns your evade into sword. So basically, you have triple mobility that lowers the cooldown as you attack enemies multiple times. You'll even lower the evade cooldown and also having multiple evade stacks. And you might be wondering, what is the point of having so much evade? Well, let me show you guys the mobility of this build. You can be jumping through the walls, through the dungeons, and also through the monsters. And as you jump through the dungeons, you have permanent leave. Well, if you hit enemies, your cooldown goes lower and you can do this. For dungeons that is super hard to travel and also that is super terrible maze, this is great, right? So this is one of the biggest highlights for the build. The build also retains all the damage coming from the Crow Volley and allows you to push for bosses, push for pit, and also for any content with great mobility and also insane survivability together with more damage. Now I do want to say a big thank you and also shout out to my friend Royal who's been sharing and also teaching me this build. And after trying this one, it is amazing to play. And it is really fun if you haven't tried this particular build style because you have so much jump and also leap. I feel like I'm a real barbarian for this particular build, or maybe a monk. Now jumping towards the boss, and let's have a look at the single target ability. Well, the first thing is I can leap to the boss in two leaps. The second thing you want to notice for this build, well, this is a terrible boss to be honest, because it has some interesting mechanics, which is a good demonstration of this build, because as you leap, you also iframe. Now, my friend Roy also taught me this one. When you iframe, your character is also invulnerable, which allows you to leap around, dodge boss mechanics, even the one-shot ability from Lilith, you can dodge that, similar to what I'm trying to do here. As I leap around, your character won't take damage while in the air because of the iframe. Well, that is what they taught me, and I'm learning on the spot. So this is actually a really good bossing and also raid ability that allows you to dodge boss mechanics. As you can see, our damage against single target is also really good for higher tier dungeons and also for any game mode. Now, if you haven't seen our previous guide, this is a transitional build for my previous Immortal Spirit Bomb. And if you haven't seen the previous build and also want to level up your Spirit Bomb, definitely check out this build because this will walk you through all the way from Torment 1 to Torment 4 using this particular initial setup. And also my build is also building onwards of this and I'll have the builds guide available for you guys in the links below. So coming over to my character and I'm pretty excited to share you guys about this build. Now one thing you want to note, for this build I am using the Tyrus Might. You don't have to be as lucky as me to roll into damage reduction, the build is already super survivable because you'll be gaining tons of barriers and also have a lot of mobility and also disabling enemies so they can't hit you which is very good for bonus damage. Now again guys, if you do not have Tyrus Might, I do have a previous build that does not use Uber Uniques. And if you want to try this build without Tyrus Might, you can, but you'll be losing a lot of resistance in the higher dungeons. You can see my resistance are not kept in the Torment 4 difficulty. And this is even with this chest, so do be aware of this. If you are trying this build without this chest, this can be a little difficult for the resistance. So let's briefly go through how does this build work. While well, we're using these particular unique pens to turn evade into sword, we're also having bonus movement speed and also as we cast the ability sword, which will allow us to be auto casting our vortex ability. So casting sword will allow us to cast vortex ability, which will suck enemies in and also knock them back and also provide you with unstoppable. Yes, you get a lot of buffs from this auto casting ability. Now, having this particular legging also allows us to gain maximum life as barrier for 1.5 seconds. And this can be very good because you're always leaping with your sword. And because you're evade, you have two plus evade charges. So here I have three evade. 
and as I evade in the open field, this will become soil ability, as you see in the video. Now, during this time, we also retain the bonus damage coming from the Harmony Helmet, and also will be using Crow Volley to explode and also return to us. We will be using the pants and also leggings for this special combination, and of course, we're using the Rod of Capalactic, together with additional critical damage on the amulet, and also additional bonus damage based on armor. We're gaining a dollar resource coming from this particular ring. Now, briefly going through the choice of skills. So here, what you can see is I am leveling up Vortex and also perking into Vortex, which allows us to have an additional act, which allows us to have additional damage and also knocks down enemies. When enemies are knocked down, we have abilities that deals increasing damage. Together with the ability to enhance the next skill casted by casting Vortex multiple times. And here with my Soul ability, I will be able to have Guaranteed Critical Strike, which returns resource, and also Soul makes us unstoppable. Yes, this build is literally unstoppable all the time, and you'll never be stunned because of this. Now the points I have removed is the points coming from Ravager, and also the defensive points over here. So those are some of the points I've removed. And other than that, I have stick towards my previous guide and also the previous setup, which allows us to have reduced cooldowns and also great ability to even lower, and also great abilities to lower cooldowns even further. Now, briefly going through the Paragon and also Glyph of Choice, I am going with Spirit for bonus critical damage and also critical strike multiplier. I'm going with Fonet over here to give us additional multiplier lightning damage and also multiplicity damage with healthy and also injured enemies. Going with Kenny here allows me to do a little non-physical damage, but mostly I'm looking towards the damage multiplier over here coming for additional bonus. Having Colossal also allows me to do more damage with Gorilla, but mostly we're doing more damage because we have more resolve. And finally, I have Talon over here to give more Eagle damage and also more multiplayer damage coming from Eagle over here. And of course, you can see my Paragons are not maxed out because I'm only level 80, 185. And this build is already great for the torment levels for any content. Now, briefly going through the skill rotation for this build. Well, similar to most of the builds, you can be fighting from afar or you can be jumping close to enemies grouping them together with Vortex, which is cast automatically, gaining barriers, and also leaping around. Now, at the start of this demonstration video, I tried to take it a little slow, and I just want to show you guys how tanky the build is. And you can see as you watch the replays, there are some parts that just stop over there, let the monster hit me, to just show you guys how durable we are by casting those spells. And as you watch through the video, you can see this is actually a terrible map. Because it is very narrow, it is actually not great to demonstrate how good the build is. But on the second map, as you get lost in those dungeons and also corridors, you really get to see how fast and also mobility, how, mo how fast traveling mobility is, <laughs> how mobile, yes, how mobile the build is. Because as I get into the maze, as I clear the dungeon, I slowly realize that, hey, I have plenty of time, but I don't know where the monsters are. So I'm actually leaping around, and this is actually a really good demonstration of this particular build. Now, in terms of the battle for this build, you do want to be pretty much button smashing or casting any skills that comes on cooldown, because your counter attack gives you evade of 100% dodge, and also as you evade, you'll be gaining unstoppable. As you evade and also you cast sword, you also gain the iframe invulnerability. Together with abilities that gives you more barriers and also more lifesteal, you're pretty much very durable against the boss and you'll be dodging a lot of mechanics, as you can see over here. And of course, the build does pack a lot of damage. Now, before I finish the video, I'll show you guys this entire testing replay, which is purposely made I didn't rush this dungeon. So you can see we didn't clear under 5 minutes, but I can definitely clear under 5 minutes with a better map that is not a maze. And at the end of the video, you can also see my gears and also my choices of the FX for those gears. Now, if you look into my gears, my current gears, those are not going to be the best gears. And I purposely did not, well, I wasn't that lucky, but I did railroad into some of the crucial gears like basic skill plus skill rank and also crow volley plus skill rank. And yes, you watch the videos, you can see my gears are not even masterworked. You can see a lot of gears haven't even had masterwork, while I prioritize on masterworking on the Tiro's Might. You might be wondering, how come, Matt? Well, I messed up. 
I don't have enough Forgotten Souls to masterwork some of the gears. So you can see some of those gears are not even masterworked. And this build works wonderfully well, even with those weaker gears. Now before we finish, I do have a small tip. If you are re-rolling for some of the core pieces of this gear, for example, if you're re-rolling into Crow Volley plus 3 and also basic skill, if you're rolling on the pants and also the gloves and using ancestral gears, this actually does not cost souls. So yes, you can see I have re-rolled maybe 10 to 20 times to get those exact skill ranks for those gears. And that was super cheap compared to buying some of those gears that came with basic skill plus two or crow volley plus three. And my stats are pretty good. I have maximum life here. We also have dexterity as great effects. So if you have gears like those and also roll into the skills you wanted, this actually took me about 10 to 20 tries. And it was not that terrible because you can see you have about one in 20 chance to get this one. And well, you do need to get lucky for plus two. And that's a small tip for doing more damage coming from this build.